Hey guys, welcome to Budget EDH. On this week's episode, we bring you a $100 budget upgrade to the Primal Genesis Naya Precon deck out of Commander 2019. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to take out 15 cards that don't really synergize with the strategy that we want to go with in this deck, and then we're going to add in 15 new cards to the deck that will help build upon our strategy. And we're looking to build the deck with a total budget of $100, including the cost of the Precon, which is $40 MSRP, leaving us $60 total for for upgrades. While we're not going to go over every single card in the video, we will go over some of the key reprints and new cards in the deck and all of the new commanders that you can choose to build your deck with. And we will also include a deck list down below in the show notes that you can check out to see the full deck list. The Commander 19 decks includes a playable 100 card deck with three different legendary foil commanders that can be played as the lead commander of the deck and one non-foil commander the decks have an MSRP of $40 and you can pick these up right now for just about MSRP. Inside these decks you get a slew of new cards and reprints. We will go over some of those cards. These are great decks for new and enfranchised players as they will include a lot of new cards and it's also great to just take them out of the box. They do play really well against each other and for just a couple extra bucks you can upgrade these decks so that they will play a lot better and that's what we will try to do in this video. Let's start out by breaking down this deck. So inside the pre-con there is eight ramp cards, which is pretty spot on. There's also eight card draw spells. There's two board wipes, which is pretty low. So we will want to look to add in more board wipes for this deck. There is eight targeted removal spells, which is a pretty good number. And then there's 24 token makers and 14 populate cards in this deck. Based on that, we will want to lean towards making Gearhead our commander for this deck because we will want to focus a lot on making tokens and populating those tokens. Let's talk about the commanders that come in this pre-constructed deck. So first up, we have Gearhead Conclave Exile. It's two or red, a green, and a white for a legendary creature, Human Shaman. When Gearhead Conclave Exile enters the battlefield, create a 4-4 green rhino creature token with trample. Whenever Gearhead attacks, populate. The token enters the battlefield tapped and attacking. And it says, to populate, create a token that's a copy of a creature token you control. Gearhead is the commander that comes on the packaging of the box and is a very powerful commander in Naya colors. Gearhead focuses heavily on not only creating tokens, but also making more tokens with the populate mechanic. And the really cool thing about them is that those tokens that you can create with Gearhead do enter the battlefield tapped and attacking, which is really nice that they don't have to sit on the table and wait a turn to attack. The next potential commander in this deck is Atla Palani Nest Tender. It's one, a red, a green, and a white for a legendary creature, Human Shaman. It has, you can pay two and tap it to create a 0-1 green egg creature token with Defender. Whenever an egg you control dies, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This commander has a really powerful ability that whenever eggs you control dies, you get to put creatures from the top of your deck onto the battlefield, which is very powerful, and especially in Naya colors, there are a lot of very large creatures in the Naya color range, and you could put Eldrazi and other big creatures into your deck as well. You could also build this deck as a dinosaur tribal or egg tribal deck, since the majority of the dinosaurs are in the Naya colors as well. Atla also allows you to create the egg creatures for a very low cost in paying to and tapping her. And if you have a way to kill your egg tokens with something like an earthquake, you can set up for some pretty crazy turns with Atla. And this is a much needed Naya commander that I think will be a lot of fun to build for a lot of players. Next up we have Marisi, Breaker of the Coil. It's one, a red, a green, and a white for a legendary creature, Cat Warrior. Your opponents can't cast spells during combat. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, goad each creature that player controls. Until your next turn, those creatures attack each combat if able and attack a player other than you if able. This has a couple of really nice abilities on it. The first being that your opponents can't cast spells during combat. That's a really nice ability if combat is what you're relying on in your game plan. And with this commander, also goading your opponent's creatures and making them attack is also a very powerful ability. The one downside to this commander is that you do have to have your creatures deal combat damage to a player 
here in order to goad all their creatures that they control. So you would want to find creatures that possibly have some type of evasion so that you're guaranteed to get in and goad those creatures. But having the ability to make your opponents attack and attack players that aren't you, and you can set it up to where you can manipulate combat because you can still cast spells during combat, just your opponents can't. The last commander in this deck is one that you can't use as the main commander in the pre-constructed deck and it's Tangarth First Mate. It's two, a red and a green for legendary creature Minotaur Warrior. Tangarth First Mate can't be blocked by more than one creature. Whenever an opponent attacks with one or more creatures, if Tangarth is tapped, you may have that opponent gain control of Tangarth until end of turn. If you do, choose a player or planeswalker that opponent is attacking. Tangarth is attacking that player or planeswalker. This is a really unique ability and one I haven't seen on a card before. Tangarth can join combat if you're opponents are attacking another player and it can do so every time an opponent attacks as long as Tangarth is tapped. It's also nice that it can't be blocked by more than one creature making it a difficult creature to block. This is a really interesting commander but I don't feel like it's a powerful commander to build around. It could be fun in the Marisi deck since you're trying to take advantage of combats and making your opponents attack each turn. That could be fun. I could also see this in Bantis the War Weaver type decks as well but building around it I think would be very difficult and not something that we're looking to do. Out of the four commanders in this deck I feel like Gearhead or Atla Palani are the two most powerful commanders. Gearhead is the more powerful one in the pre-constructed deck and the easier one to build around just upgrading the pre-con but I do feel like Atla Palani will be the more powerful commander with a clean build and one that synergizes really well with her egg generation and and ability to pull cards off the top of your deck. We're gonna build our pre-constructed deck with Gearhead, Conclave Exile, and we'll get into the cards here in just a moment. Let's talk about some of the reprints that are included in this pre-constructed deck and some of the new and notable cards that are also included in this pre-con. So the first card I want to talk about is Full Flowering. It's XX green for a sorcery. Populate X times. To populate, create a token that's a copy of a creature token you control. Do this X times. This is really great in a populate and token based deck and this is a really powerful card in the pre-constructed deck if you draw it off the top of your library. Next we have Gearhead's Belligerence. X red red for a sorcery. Gearhead's Belligerence deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures. Whenever a creature dealt damage this way dies this turn, populate. One thing to note with this card is you don't have to kill the creatures with this spell. You can, for example, deal one damage to each of your opponent's creatures and then use something like an earthquake to finish them all off. You will get to populate that many times with this spell. And this is a nice card to include in this deck. Then we have Idol of Oblivion. It's a two mana artifact that you can tap it to draw a card, activate this ability only if you created a token this turn, and then you can pay eight and tap it to sacrifice Idol of Oblivion, create a 10-10 colorless Eldrazi creature token. This card's relatively inexpensive, it only costs two mana, and then anytime you create a token on a turn, you can tap it to draw a card, which is a really nice ability. It can actually turn into a really large 10-10 token that you're able to populate in this deck fairly easily. Easily. Then we have Orin Frostfang. Three green green for a snow creature snake. Attacking creatures you control have death touch. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. This is a really great card draw engine in this deck. We will have a lot of creatures attacking each turn since that's the main strategy of our deck is to win through combat. If this sits around and we are able to attack multiple turns with this, we will be able to draw a lot of cards. A card that I was really impressed with with when I was playing the pre-constructed deck is Celestia Eulogist. It's two and a green for a creature centaur druid and you can pay two and a green to exile target creature card from a graveyard then populate. A couple things to note with this card is it does say any graveyard. You can use this to stop opponent's graveyard strategies. When I played this pre-constructed deck against the other pre-con decks this card did a lot of work against the madness deck being able to bring cards back from their graveyards and having another way of populating on a creature is extremely important to this deck. 
Next up we have Song of the World Soul. Four white white for an enchantment whenever you cast a spell, populate. Now this is a pretty expensive card at six converted mana cost, but if you do get this card onto the battlefield, the game can get out of hand very quickly if this card's on the battlefield and you have some tokens to populate. It's a very powerful ability in this deck, though it does cost quite a bit to get out onto the battlefield. Next up we have some cards that are notable reprints in this deck that work out really well in the pre-con. And the first one is Angel of Sanctions. Three white white for a creature angel with flying. When Angel of Sanctions enters the battlefield, you may exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Angel of Sanctions leaves the battlefield. And then it has Embalm, five and a white. And then to Embalm, you exile this card from your graveyard, create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a white zombie angel with no mana cost, Embalm only as a sorcery. This card is great. It can take care of a problematic permanent that your opponents may control, and then if it dies you get to embalm and bring it back as a token which is even better than playing it as a creature because you can populate the token and then exile permanence your opponent's control every time you create a token which is extremely powerful in this deck Another card I really like in this deck is Felden of the Third Path. It's one red red for legendary creature human artificer. You can pay two and a red and tap it, create a token that's a copy of target creature card in your graveyard, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. It gains haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Being able to create a token for a turn is powerful, but the best part about this card, you can make any creature card in your graveyard into a token, and then if you have a way to populate that card, it gets to stick around forever, which is extremely great in this deck, and then you can potentially keep populating those tokens and it can get out of hand really quickly. The next reprint in this deck is Garrick Primal Hunter. It's two green, green, green for a Planeswalker that has plus one, put a three, three green beast creature token onto the battlefield. Minus three, draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. And then minus six, put a 6-6 six, six green worm creature token onto the battlefield for each land you control. Garrick's really great in this deck as it does give you a way to create tokens, which is something when playing the pre-con can be problematic if your opponents kill all of your tokens. So having this attached to a planeswalker is nice. And it also gives you a way to draw cards, which is also really important in a deck where you care about combat. You don't want to run out of gas while you're applying pressure, and Garrick gives you a way to refill your hand as you're playing all your creatures out and your spells. Next card I want to talk about is Mimic Fat. It's three colorless for an artifact that has imprint. Whenever a non-token creature dies, you may exile that card. If you do, return each other card exiled with Mimic Fat to its owner's hand. You can pay three and tap it to create a token that's a copy of, of a card exile with mimic fat it gains haste exiled at the beginning of the next end step this is another powerful inclusion in this deck and it is similar to Felden of the Third Path in that the token does go away at the beginning of the next end step. So if you have a way to populate this, it's going to make this card even better. But still being able to get any non-token creature that dies, not just yours, but your opponents as well, can be very powerful in this deck. The next notable card in this deck is Soul Foundry. It's four colorless mana for an artifact, and it has imprint. When Soul Foundry comes into play, you may remove a creature card in your hand from the game, and you can pay X and tap it. Put a creature token into play that's a copy of the imprinted creature card. X is the converted mana cost of that card. This is another great way to get you some really nice tokens. If you're able to imprint something like Avenger of Zendikar on this card and make an Avenger of Zendikar token every turn plus populate it, that could set you up for some pretty amazing turns and should put you in a good spot to win the game. Then we have another really great commander that's included in this deck that is one of the more popular populate and token generating commanders and that's Tristani Selesnia's voice. It's green green white white for a legendary creature dryad. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness, and you can pay one, a green, and a white to tap and populate. This card's really great in any token-based strategy. Being able to populate so easily on this creature, and then also being able to gain some life over the course of the game by having this on the battlefield is very important. Let's talk about the 15 cards that we're going to add into this deck to make it more competitive. The first set of cards that I want to talk about are cards that create 
create tokens or make more tokens in this deck. And tokens are really important to this deck because if you don't have a token out on the battlefield, then you can't populate. So one of the issues I was having when I was playing the pre-con out of the box was that if my opponents had a way to get rid of my tokens, sometimes I would sit there and I would have nothing to populate. So that is something that I definitely want to smooth out that problem with the deck. So the first card that we're going to add in is Tender Shoot Dryad. It's four and a green for a creature dryad with ascend. If you control 10 or more permanents, you get the city's blessing for the rest of the game. At the beginning of each upkeep, create a 1 1 green sapperling creature token. Sapperlings you control get plus two plus two as long as you have the city's blessing. One thing to note here is that it does make the token at the beginning of each upkeep, not just your upkeep. So you will get a token every time your opponent goes to their upkeep as well. You will get the city's blessing very quickly with this card on the battlefield. Most of the time you'll get it on the first turn of the table if you play this on turn five. This is a great way to make a lot of tokens in this deck. The next token generator that I want to talk about is God Eternal Oketra. It's three white white for a legendary creature zombie god with double strike. Whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 4-4 black zombie warrior creature token with vigilance. When God Eternal Oketra dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, you may put it into its owner's library third from the top. This is a really great card for creating tokens tokens. Anytime you cast a creature, you're going to get a 4-4 zombie. And this deck has a ton of creatures in it. The main strategy of this deck is to win with combat damage. So you do have a lot of creatures in there incidentally. And God Eternal Oketra also has a really great ability where if she were to die or get exiled, you can put her into your library third from the top. So she's always sitting there and will always come back. And it is a very powerful card in this deck. The next token producer is Omnath Locus of Rage. It's three red red green green for legendary creature elemental that has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a 5-5 red and green elemental creature token onto the battlefield. Whenever Omnath, Locus of Rage, or another elemental you control dies, Omnath deals three damage to target creature or player. Being able to make 5-5 tokens every time you play a land is extremely powerful in this deck, especially since you do have a lot of ways to make more of those tokens with the populate mechanic on your commander. Having some board wipe protection on this card is also very great because board wipes is something that we are very weak to in this deck. Our opponents being able to take care of all of our threats is a problem and if they do board wipe we have a way to get some damage back at them to disincentivize the board wipe and to target our creatures. The next card I want to talk about is Avenger of Zendikar. It's five green green for a creature elemental and it says when Avenger of Zendikar enters the battlefield create a zero one green plant creature token for each land you control and it has landfall whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control you may put a plus one plus one counter on each plant creature token you control this is another great card for filling up the board with tokens and since it does have landfall those plant tokens can get big very quickly if you play this card and then play a land your plants will be a one two and if you have a way to play an extra land each turn or to play a fetch land and then crack it in the same turn those will be two three threes which are pretty big especially if you have seven or more of those on the battlefield the damage does add up quickly we also can populate those tokens to get even more plants on the battlefield which is another really nice benefit of this card the next card I want to talk about is Anointed Procession. It's three and a white for an enchantment. If an effect would create one or more tokens under your control it creates twice that many of those tokens instead. Now this is a pretty expensive card at $15, but its effect is extremely powerful, especially in white. This effect is one that we typically see in green with something like doubling season. And this is a very powerful card in this deck, being able to double all of our tokens. You will be able to get two tokens if you populate with this card on the battlefield. And this just gives us another way of creating a lot of tokens and going wide in this deck, which is something that we are trying to do. The next card I wanna talk about is Aurelia the War Leader. It's two red red white white for legendary creature angel with flying vigilance and haste. Whenever Aurelia attacks for the first time each turn, untap all creatures you control. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. In our deck, we do want to win with combat damage 
nine times out of ten. And having Aurelia on the battlefield is going to help us win the game so much quicker. Let's say we're able to attack one player, untap attack another player with Aurelia, we could potentially deal a lot of damage all in one turn. She's a very powerful card to include in this deck and at only 655 she fits right into the budget. Let's talk about a few cards that we include in this deck to help us get more card draw and build a better engine for when we cast creature spells. The first one being Zendikar Resurgent. Five green green for an enchantment. Whenever you tap a land for mana, add one mana to your mana pool of any type that land produced. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. So this card's great in two ways. Not only does it double all of your mana, which is good because we have a lot of creatures that have high converted mana cost in this deck, it also lets you draw a card anytime you you cast a creature spell. In this deck we have more than 30 creatures so being able to have a repeatable way of drawing a card is really important and goes really well with the other cards that are included in the pre-con that give you similar abilities. In addition another great card in this deck is Guardian Project. It's three and a green for an enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control if it doesn't have the same name as another creature you control or a creature card in your graveyard draw a card. Now in Commander this card basically says anytime a non-token creature creature enters the battlefield in your control, draw a card. Because it is a singleton format, we only have one of each creature in our deck. This is another great card to include in your deck to smooth out your draws over the course of the game. And the last card that we included in this deck to help us draw cards is Greater Good. It's two green green for an enchantment. It has sacrifice a creature, draw cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power, then discard three cards. This gives us a great way to sacrifice our creatures if we don't need them and draw some additional cards off of them. It also gives us some great board wipe protection if we are able to sacrifice our big creatures and draw additional cards off of them. This is just another really great card to include in this deck. The next card I want to talk about gives us an additional way of interacting with our opponents and it's Generous Gift. It's two and a white for an instant out of Modern Horizons. It says destroy target permanent. Its controller creates a 3-3 green elephant creature token. This is basically the white version of Beast Within and it gives you a really nice clean way to deal with problematic permanents in this deck and it does give your opponent a 3-3 creature which in this deck isn't really an issue because you have a lot of ways of going taller than those creatures anyway. Then I wanted to include another way to be able to search our deck and I included Eldamri's call in the deck it's green and a white for an instant. Search your library for a creature card, reveal that card, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. This is a really great inclusion in this deck. The price on this card is only $2, and it is a great way to find any powerful creature in our deck. Since the main game plan of this deck is to win through combat damage, if our opponents are able to wipe our board or deal with some of our creatures and other permanents, our deck will have a tough time recovering. So I wanted to include a couple of ways of protecting our creatures and our permanents, and the first one being heroic intervention. It's one in a green for an instant and it says permanent you control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Now this card has gone up in price quite a bit over the last several months but it is a really powerful one and it gives you a way to protect yourself against board wipes or targeted removal if you are setting up to win the game. Boros Charm is another way of protecting your creatures and permanents as well and it's a red and a white for an instant and you can choose one. Boros Charm deals four damage to target players there permanence you control gain indestructible until end of turn and target creature gains double strike until end of turn. Now most of the time we're going to use this for the permanence you control gain indestructible. It does have some added value in that it gives you three different options you could choose from. You could use this to deal the four last points of damage to an opponent. You could use this to give your 10-10 Aldrazi double strike to kill an opponent off so it does give you some flexibility which is really nice on a card. The last two cards in this deck give us an alternative way to win the game, and it's a two card combo. The first one being Godo Bandit Warlord. It's five and a red for a legendary creature. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an equipment card and put it onto the battlefield. If you do, shuffle your library. Whenever Goto attacks for the first time each turn, untap it in all samurai you control. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. And Goto combos with Helm of the Host. It's a four mana legendary artifact equipment. 
At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of equipped creature, except that token isn't legendary if equipped creature is legendary. That token gains haste, and it has equip 5. The way this combo works is that when you go to attack with Godo, at the beginning of combat on your turn, Helm of the Host is going to create another Godo token. And then you're going to attack with Godo, and then after combat you're going to be able to untap Godo, and there's an additional combat phase. Now you have a new Godo on the battlefield that's a token, when you go back Back to combat, Helm of the Host is going to make another Godo token, and you're going to swing in with your two Godo tokens, and the token copy of Godo is going to untap, and you're going to have an extra combat phase. When you go to combat the next turn, Helm of the Host is going to create another token, and this is going to continue happening. One thing to note is the, the new token that you're attacking with each turn is going to be tapped after your second attack. You will use your new tokens to attack in for damage. This is a great way to win the game with this combat combo and it is an easy two card combo to win the game with. One thing to note with Helm of the Host is Helm of the Host is also great with majority of the creatures in this deck because you do have a lot of ways to abuse enter the battlefield triggers in this deck. Putting Helm of the Host on your commander for example is going to give you an extra gear at every turn which is going to make an extra rhino token and it's going to give you another populate trigger each turn tapped and attacking. You could put this onto Avenger of Zendikar and get a bunch of plants every turn which is really good. So this card does work if the Godo plan doesn't work it's still a really great card to include in this deck. Let's talk about some of the cards that I would take out of the pre-constructed deck to fit in our 15 cards that we added. So the first card I want to take out is Cliffside Rescuer. It's one and a white for a creature core soldier with vigilance. Tap it and sacrifice it. Target permanent you control gains protection from each of your opponents until end of turn. This is a new card that comes in both of the white commander decks and it doesn't really have a home in this deck. It does something unique but it's not really something that we're looking to do and we could find a better card to replace this. Similarly, the next card I want to take out is Scare Tiller. It's four generic mana for an artifact creature scarecrow. Whenever it becomes tapped, you get to choose one. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and return target land from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. This card would be great in something like Lord Windgrace or another Lands Matter deck. It really doesn't have a place, so this is an easy card to take out of our deck. The next card is also a new one and it's Hate Mirage. Three and a red for sorcery. Choose up to two target creatures you don't control. For each of those creatures, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Those tokens gain haste. Exile them at the beginning of the next end step. While this card does create tokens, sometimes this card will just sit in your hand and have nothing valuable to copy. One thing to note is if you do set up the perfect scenario with this card, you could copy something like a big Eldrazi or another really big payoff creature, attack with your Gearhead, and then populate the token of the copy and it will stick around after the end of the turn. When we played this card in testing, it just sat in our hands and really didn't have a really great target in a lot of the games that we were playing so I would recommend taking this card out of your deck to put in something that has more of an impact on the game. The next card that we're going to take out of this deck is Tangarth First Mate. While this creature does provide a very unique ability and would have a great home in Thantis or Marisi, in this deck it really doesn't do a whole lot. Being able to attack our opponents for five extra damage each turn potentially just isn't really what we're looking to do so we're going to go ahead and take this card out of our deck. The next new card that we're going to take out of this deck is Tectonic Hellion. It's 5 red red for creature Hellion with haste. Whenever it attacks, each player who controls the most lands sacrifices 2 lands. This card is not very good. I don't really see a home for this card in any deck, let alone this one. You have to really build around this card. We are playing a deck that has green in it, so we are going to be ramping quite a bit, and there are a lot of ramp spells in our deck. First, you have to have the least amount of lands in order to get your opponents with this card, which a lot of times in this deck we will have more lands than our opponents because we're playing green and on turn seven getting our opponents to sacrifice two lands really isn't that great and you would want to be ramping this card out so you can get them early but then it kind of goes against what you're trying to do with this card because if you ramp it out to get it out early then you have more lands than your opponents so you would really need to set this up to where you're using creature ramp or some other type of ramp outside of lands which we really don't have a lot in this deck to get this creature down early to get your opponents to all sacrifice two lands 
lands. It's kind of magical Christmas land in my opinion. This card just really isn't that great. The next card that we're going to take out is Voice of Many. It's two green green for a creature elf druid. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card for each opponent who controls fewer creatures than you. Similar to the Hellion, this card is very situational. Sometimes you could play this card and, and draw three cards, which is the best case scenario, and other times you have less creatures than your opponents, and you can draw no cards with this. For four mana, it's really not what we're trying to do with this deck. Something like Guardian Project replaces this card and is a much better option at four mana than this card is. The next card we're going to take out is Doomed Artisan. It's two and a white for a creature human artificer. Sculptures you control can't attack or block. At the beginning of your end step, create a colorless sculpture artifact creature token with this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of sculptures you control. Now when we did play this deck in the pre-constructed only arena, I did have this card on the battlefield and it did accrue a lot of value over the course of five or six turns. I was able to get quite a few sculptures onto the battlefield, but it is a very, very slow card. If you're playing in the pre-constructed only meta, this card can be powerful, but once you expand out of pre-constructed and you start upgrading your deck, this card just takes a long time to get going. So you would play this card on potentially turn three. It's going to make you a sculpture at your end step, and then every other turn it'll make you a sculpture unless you have a way to populate it. And then you have to wait for your doomed artisan to actually die before you can even attack with those creatures. It's just a very slow card. Now if you're able to sit there for five or six turns, it will generate you a lot of sculptures and put a lot of power on the board. The next card that we're going to take out is Fresh Meat. It's three and a green for an instant. Create a three three green beast creature token for each creature put into your graveyard from the battlefield this turn. This is a good card to protect you against board wipes. The only problem with this is it costs four mana and in this deck we are trying to tap out and play threats on the board so we can close out the game quickly and kill our opponents. Having a card sit in your hand and holding up four mana just really isn't what we want to do and the payoff for it is very minimal. Getting a 3-3 three, three green beast for each creature that is put into the graveyard just isn't that great. You'd rather put in something like Boros Charm or Heroic Intervention that just makes our permanents indestructible and then we get to keep our board rather than holding up two extra mana to get some 3-3 three, three beast. It just isn't as good. Next we're going to take out Commander's Insignia. Two white white for an enchantment. Creatures you control get plus one plus one for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone this game. Again this is a very very slow card. This comes down on potentially turn four and gives your creatures plus one plus one if you have cast your commander. If you haven't cast your commander yet then this literally does nothing and you would probably want to cast your commander three to four times in the game to actually get some value off of this card which is extremely slow because by the time you cast your commander enough to make this card worthwhile the game is probably over anyway. Next we've got Slice and Twain. Two green green for an instant, destroy target artifact or enchantment and then draw a card. While this is a great card for getting rid of artifacts and enchantments there are better options that you could use especially ones that come on creatures so something like acidic slime would be a better option in this deck since it does give you the body or reclamation stage is another great option for this deck so i would just take out this card you could put those cards in if you're really worried about artifacts enchantments there are other ways to deal with them in this deck next card that we're going to take out is rock egg it's two and a white for a creature bird with defender when it dies put a three three white bird creature token with flying onto the battlefield. This really offers up nothing in our deck unless we were playing something like Atla Palani where we want eggs in our deck. They did update this card to where it is a bird egg. So if you are playing Atla Palani that cares about eggs as your commander, this would be a great card to include in that deck. Since we're not playing Atla Palani as the commander, she still is in the deck. It's just not as powerful. So we could replace this card with something that's going to make more of an impact in our deck. The next card we're going to take out is Heart Piercer Manticore. It's two red red for a creature. When it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, Heart Piercer Manticore deals damage equal to that creature's power to target creature or player. And then it has Embalm, five and a red. You can exile this card from your graveyard, create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a white zombie manticore with no mana cost. Embalm only as a sorcery. This card takes a lot of setup to get significant value off of it. And I just don't feel like it's worth the spot in this deck. You'll play this on four. And then when it enters the battlefield, you have to sacrifice a different creature. So, I mean, like you could sacrifice a token with this and then it's gonna 
going to deal damage equal to that creature's power to target creature or player. If you're sacrificing a token like a sapling or something, it's only going to deal one damage, which really isn't that great. So I just don't feel like this card's really that great in this deck. The next card we're going to take out is Druid's Deliverance. It's one in a green for an instant. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to you this turn and then populate. While this is a card that's going to give us a way to populate, preventing combat damage really isn't something that we're really looking to do in this deck. In almost all cases, we are going to be the aggressor, so we're going to be attacking our opponents, and we're going to have the bigger creatures on the board, so we will have ways to block our opponent's creatures if that becomes an issue. Preventing combat damage really is something that we're not looking to do. There are much better cards that could be included in this slot that we're going to include in this deck. And then the last two cards we want to take out is any two lands from the deck. This deck does come with 40 lands in it, which is extremely high. So we want to take out a couple lands. The lands I recommend taking out are the ones that enter the battlefield tapped. With the pre-constructed mana base, they did include a ton of lands that enter the battlefield tapped, which is really going to slow the deck down. So taking those lands that enter the battlefield tapped, they don't give you any value for playing them, are really easy cuts in this deck. So the two I took out are Kazandu Refuge and Grey Pelt Refuge. When they enter the battlefield, they give you a life, which is negligible in this deck. Since we are going to be the aggressor, we don't really care too much about our life total. I just want to take a moment to thank all of my patrons for all of their support. If you're interested in signing up, go over to patreon.com slash budgetedh. There are different tiers where you can sign up to be a patron of our content, and there are a lot of different rewards at each tier. I also want to thank you for watching our video today. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of the deck, and if there are any cards that we may have missed that are great inclusions for the deck. And if you have any suggestions for the next video or any content that you'd like to see, just let us know down in the comments below. See you guys next time.